Will you tell us a little bit about of the research findings from HPTN 061? Yes. We released results on Monday from the historic uh, um, study HPTN 061 that showed in generally in supports that there is a high and sustained <laughs> burden of HIV among black MSM. Five times higher um, um, incidence rates compared to black MSM to white MSM. When it came to the younger MSM, those under 30, there was a three times higher incidence rate among them than among their white counterparts as well. So the 061 study was a feasibility study of a multi-component <laughs> intervention. And one of the things they tested was, will black men test for HIV? We had a 97% rate of black men willing to test for HIV. And when they did test, we found a 12% incidence of HIV at enrollment. And that tells me something. That tells me that it was probably delayed testing a little bit, but, but also 12% of those men had advanced infection, so they waited too long. Um, and I don't know if they were not orphan testing earlier or not, but, you know, with the 97% willingness to test, testing's not the problem. Our healthcare system has historically not, not welcoming to not only black people, but black men, for lots of reasons. We don't have culturally competent healthcare providers. Um, people are mistreated. So we had something called peer health navigators that referred men for other services. So the men in 061 that were a part of the peer health navigation piece were retained in the study 100% because we had an initial, um, we followed these men for a year and we checked in with them at, at different time points. Those men were not lost in the study. And I think it has to do with the fact that we, we were able to uh, sh uh, convey to these men that their lives were more than, to, even to us, than just their <laughs> HIV AIDS status. And it's very important. The other thing about 061 is it is the, is the largest um, prospective cohort of black MSM study, 1,553 men. Um, and, and, and prospective meaning it, we got real-time data. We didn't have to go back and do a retrospective analysis. This is actual real time, which makes those incidence rates even that much more relevant. Great. What sort of uh, facets of psychosocial issues do you feel that are um, important to address? You mentioned that it's important to recognize that people are more than just their HIV status. Absolutely. I referred um, for... Um, our upcoming Black Gay Research Agenda that we will release after the conference to make sure that it encompasses all of the, the and addresses the data that came out of this. Well, one of those categories is social determinants. And social determinants is a really wide range of things. So under that category, the issues of stigma, um, homophobia, uh, depression, housing, poverty, unemployment, education not just HIV AIDS education education in general you know when you have and incarceration mm. you know we have more men more black men incarcerated than we have as freshmen in college what's wrong with that picture and then you know we also have a high rate of HIV infection in our prison system and at the current federal standards don't allow for condom distribution in prisons because nobody has sex in prison, which we know is absolutely absurd. So those are all of the things around uh, uh, social determinants that really must be addressed in a research agenda from a policy perspective and very specific research recommendations. How do you see the federal government responding to the lack of access to harm reduction materials in prisons in the United States? Poorly. <laughs> you know, the current administration has probably done so much for HIV AIDS, particularly black, black gay men. You know, when the President of the United States says in, um, you know, his State of the Union that we must do more to show black gay men, especially young black gay men, that their lives matter. No president has ever made a statement like that. So I want to be clear, I think the administration has done great, but this is one policy issue that has not been able to be addressed. And we've been able to overturn the travel ban, hence 
the reason why we're standing in Washington, D.C. at the International AIDS Conference, because the conference would never come back here until we abolished that policy. You know, we did some good things on needle exchange, and then we reversed it. Um, um, so this is, this is still yet a policy issue. So we have to, we have to change it at the federal system, because you know you have the, the federal and, um, 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 penitentiaries, then you have the whole state issue. You know, there's a difference between prison and jail. Jails at the local level are controlled by the local governments. And you know from state to state, those policies range can be so wide. So you have to work state by state and county by county sometimes to change those policies. But we have to change the, the federal policy that will allow condom distribution in, in prisons. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you so much for You're your time. You're absolutely welcome, sir.